Welcome to an example of undamped force motion using a mass on a spring. We'll be solving the problem using the formulas shown below, which we derived in a previous lesson. To begin, a three kilogram mass is attached to a spring with a spring constant of 75 newtons per meter. There is no damping and the forcing function is big F of t equals 10 cosine 5t. The object is initially displaced 0.2 meters downward from its equilibrium position and is given an initial velocity upward of 0.1 meters per second. We know we can model the mass on a spring using the differential equation mx double prime plus cx prime plus kx equals big F sub zero times cosine of omega one t, where m is the mass, c is the damping or friction constant, which in this case is equal to zero because there's no damping, k is the spring constant, and the forcing function is given by big F sub zero times cosine of omega one t. Because c is equal to zero when there's no damping, we can simplify the differential equation as shown below as mx double prime plus kx equals big F sub zero times cosine of omega one t, where omega sub zero is equal to the square root of k divided by m. If omega sub zero equals omega sub one, the general solution is in the form shown here on the left. If omega sub zero doesn't equal omega sub one, then the general solution is in the form shown here on the right. Going back up to our problem, the mass m is equal to three, the spring constant k is 75, and because the forcing function is big F of t equals 10 cosine 5t, we have the differential equation three x double prime plus 75 x equals 10 cosine 5t. We're also told the initial displacement is 0 0.1 meters downward from its, equilibrium, from its equilibrium position. Because the displacement is downward, we have x of zero equals positive 0 0.2. The initial velocity is upward at a rate of 0 0.1 meters per second. Because the velocity is upward, we know x prime of zero equals negative 0 0.1. Let's go ahead and list all the given information. Again, we know the mass m is three. We know the spring constant is 75. There's no damping and therefore c is zero. Because the forcing function is big F of t equals 10 cosine 5t, big F sub zero is 10, and omega sub one is equal to five. And now we calculate omega sub zero, and now we determine omega sub zero, which is equal to the square root of k divided by m, which gives us omega sub zero equals five. Notice here, omega sub zero equals omega sub one, which is equal to five, so we'll go ahead and call five omega, and we'll be using the general solution shown here on the left at the bottom. And since we're using the formula, we now simply substitute five for omega, 10 for big F sub zero, three for m, and again five for omega. This gives us a general solution, which if we simplify this last fraction, we have x of t equals c sub one cosine five t, plus c sub two sine five t, plus one third t sine five t. And now we need to determine c sub one and c sub two using the initial conditions. Let's do this on the next slide. Beginning with x of zero equals 0 0.2, we substitute zero for t and set the function value equal to 0 0.2 or 2 tenths. Subbing in zero for t, we have c sub one times cosine zero, which gives us c sub one. Notice the next two terms involve sine and sine zero is zero. The next two terms drop out, giving us c sub one equals 0 0.2, which simplifies to one fifth as a fraction. Subbing one fifth for c sub one, we now know x of t equals one fifth cosine five t plus c sub two sine five t plus one third t sine five t. The next step is to find x prime of t, so we can use the initial condition x prime of zero equals negative 0 0.1 to determine c sub two. Notice to differentiate the first two terms, we apply the chain rule. To differentiate the third term, we need to apply the product rule and the chain rule. And here is x prime of t. Simplifying, we have x prime of t equals negative two thirds sine five t plus five c sub two cosine five t plus five thirds t cosine five t. You may want to pause the video and verify this derivative. And now we use x prime of zero equals negative 0 0.1 to determine c sub two. We substitute zero for t and set the function value equal to negative 0 0.1. When we substitute zero for t, the first term is negative two thirds sine zero, which is zero. And then we have plus five c sub two times cosine zero, which gives us five c sub two. And then this third term has a factor of t in it, and therefore when t is zero, we get zero. 
This gives us 5 C sub 2 equals negative 0 0.1 or negative 1 tenth. Solving for C sub 2, we have C sub 2 equals negative 1 50th. And now we substitute negative 1 50th for C sub 2, which gives us the equation that models the motion of the mass. We have x of t equals 1 5th cosine 5t minus 1 50th sine 5t plus 1 3rd t sine 5t. Before we go, let's look at the graph of x of t. Here's the graph of x of t. Notice the amplitude is increasing without bound. I hope you found this helpful.